Little, little, little. Little, little, little bit. I can't even see your eyes anymore, Toby. I can't even see your eyes. You're going to have to get a haircut. Do you want to go for a walk? <laughs> You're going to fall down if you do that too hard. Oh, you want to go for a walk? Kiss. Speak. Oh, he gave me a real kiss. Okay, let's go. Come here. Go for my walk. Hello. Love you. Love you. Ow, ow, love you, you girls. Love you. Bye, Toby. Oh, no, I don't want to touch him. Bye. Bye. Come on. Oh, it's trash day. Gotta get the trashes out. <laughs> Jeez, these little kids giving hugs. They're at just the right height for the. Oh, oh, oh ow. Hold me, Jesus, because I'm shaking like a leaf. <clears throat> when I was working at the Royal Family Kids Camp, I got kicked in the balls and punched in the throat like 12 times, man. Three times a day for four days straight. There was a Royal Family Kids Camp was like a kids camp for foster kids and troubled kids and stuff like that. It just beat on me. All the counselors got beat up. But there was a magical ending to that that camp every time. A lot of kids came to Jesus. And they mostly talked about how Joseph was thrown down in the well and rebuked and cut out and left behind by his family. Joseph in the Technicolor dream coat, you know. And they used that in relation to where these children were in life as foster kids and feeling like they were abandoned and lost from their original families. And it's powerful. It's a powerful, did little plays really cool. That was a long time ago now. Today, I always, every day, you have to recheck. Where am I? Where are we in the Bible? Are we the story of Gideon or Samson or John the Baptist? No, that's their story. Where are we in the Bible? Are we in the Bible? Are we in the book of Acts? Well, in some ways, yes, but no. We're not even there in the book of Acts. That had its story. Towards the end, it's Paul going to... I heard one time that the book of Acts was Luke's written testimony when Paul is going to appeal to Caesar and defend himself and here's the testimony so it's like a legal document of the history of everything that went on pretty cool idea not sure if that's true but I heard it one time and then you get to it's like well what is it end in Acts 28 I think so you want to go what's Acts 29 what's Acts 30 what's Acts 31 well you got to go to the Paul's letters and find your identity in Jesus Christ, man. It's finished work. Here we are. We're citizens of heaven, not of earth. We're ambassadors of the light here on the planet until Jesus comes back. All right, that's who we are. Okay, now we know what to do. You all right? You get reoriented. I was going to say something else, but I forget. Check it out. What I really want to say is where are we according to Bible prophecy? I believe that we are exactly in Daniel 9, 26b. Every verse, not every verse, you know, Jesus wept. That's just 26, you know, whatever verse, blah, 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 A. 
But if like a verse is really long and it carries multiple sentences, it's marked up in like A, B, C. So Daniel 9, 26 B, the second part of that verse is where I believe we are. I'm gonna read it in the King James first. You always go King James first. Then you can expand into the other versions, Hebrew, Greek, and look, you know, for some deeper inspiration or uh, exp exp explanations. So Daniel 9, 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So that's after the 62 weeks of Daniel's 70 week prophecy. There was seven then 62 and those are divided up on the timing of Jerusalem from the leaving of Babylon the building of the temple and the wall and then Jesus coming and he'll be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary the people of the prince that's Titus Rome that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's 70 AD. Now, okay, there's 70 AD right there. That's exactly what happened after Jesus was cut off. The people of the prince, the people of the Antichrist that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Titus. Now, some people say Titus was the Assyrian. He's an Assyrian. And that was part of Rome. Syria. That's where the Antichrist will be from. And it's not Booger Whistle. <laughs> Nobody's going to sign a deal with Booger Whistle. I can tell you that. Okay, now check it out. <clears throat> Here's exactly where we are. Daniel 9, 26, B. And the end thereof shall be with a flood okay that was the total wiping out of israel and they're dispersed everywhere and unto the end of the war desolations are determined that's where we are because that is not referencing there's no war all right. It's not like the Jews fought Romans there. There was no Maccabean war. It was Titus coming in and destroying it. So you go to some other versions, NASB, which is takes literal transliterations of certain words and gives you options. I love, especially on the internet, you can get options like to click and look at different things inside the NASB. And it and there's so t Daniel nine. 26b and its end will come with a flood that's the dysphoria of the jews all across the world and even unto the end there will be war desolations are determined so since titus destroyed the temple and the jews dispersed it's saying there's going to be war until the end what have we seen? Wars and wars, changing of nations, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, strike that, reverse it, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Persian Gulf, 9-11, Russia was in Afghanistan, then we went into Afghanistan, wars, 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 wars. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have we seen any like die? Oh, Israel. War. Come back and guess what? War. So now, when you go back and you look at the King James Version of Daniel 926b, the war. It's very possible that it's a definitive article there. World War Three, or the war at the end, because there's going to be wars all the way up to the end. 
Even to the end, there will be war. Desolations are determined. And in King James, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. That's exactly where we are right now. Because, how do you know? Why, is it, why aren't we in Daniel 9.27? Because Daniel 9.27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's the Antichrist. That's the start of the tribulation. We, won't, we are not there. And I don't believe we will see that day. The rapture is right in between there. But just for the purposes of where are we, Daniel 9.26b can't move into Daniel 9.27. So what are we waiting for? War. Plain and simple, we're always waiting for just more war and desolations are determined. The outcomes are already determined. Isn't that amazing? Because God can see, he knows the end from the beginning. He's not inside of time. So he sees it all, and the outcomes, the desolations, the pouring out of man's wrath upon man's wrath, and Satan's involvement and all that, it's determined, and there's war. Okay, so I believe we're right there. So before this big gap between 926B, Daniel 926B, and Daniel 927, and he shall confirm the covenant. Dude, the peace, the Antichrist is gonna come and bring peace. He rides on a white horse. He comes in the rainbow. If you go look at the Antichrist in the book of Revelations, it says he has a bow. That is not a bow and arrow. It's been taught my whole life that he comes with a bow. He's given a crown and he has a bow. That's not a bow and arrow. It's the same word used for rainbow in God's, Noah's, you know, Genesis. God put a rainbow, a bow. He stretched his bow in the sky. The rainbow in light. We know what that means. We know what the Antichrist will be coming as. So anyway, we're not... We see it all building up, but we're not there. We're right in between. But I think there's a war. There's got to be like this huge war for the Antichrist to bring peace. I mean, right now they're doing one world religion, one world nations, Paris, Olympics, pagan, satanic crap. But there's no war. The only war really is a forgotten war of Russia versus Ukraine where it's just a slaughter field and another war of pressure in Israel but how is that big enough to cause the Antichrist to come in and confirm the covenant it's going to get big time and I believe Isaiah 17 shows that a nuclear bomb is going to get hit on Damascus <clears throat> by Israel and there will be a massive retaliation from Hezbollah, Lebanon, Syria, Iran, all of the <clears throat> proxies of Islamic terror are going to strike Israel too. And the north, you think one little missile that took out 10 teenagers and kids is a big deal? No. It's going to be huge. That is what's coming. That's right where we are. And I think... It would make sense that this would happen before, let's say Donald Trump does come. Let's say it doesn't matter either way you look at it. Let's say Donald Trump is the Antichrist or Donald Trump is a peacemaker and he stops the wars and we get a certain amount of time. It doesn't matter either way because that war that's going to escalate. I believe. Um, simultaneously. It's all going to go simultaneous. 
probably at the end of September, right before the Feast of Trumpets, or right after, in those seven days of awe, you're talking right then. So the end of September, beginning of October, is the start to a nuclear bomb's going to get dropped. That, okay, there, let's just make it plain. The end of September, the beginning of October. Now, timelines get shifted. I don't know. I'm just a man trying to read stuff, trying to figure things out. And yes, I have times where the Lord tells me things. I'm not feeling like the Lord told me this. I'm just, this is my interpretation. Justin Foy. I think a nuclear bomb comes the end of September, beginning of October. And that's the war mentioned in Daniel 9.26b at the very end. Then you got rapture. Then you got Gog Magog. Then you got everything happening. And then the Antichrist rises up. And now why, see, that's why the war has to include Israel. And Daniel 9.26. It's not World War One. It's not World War Two. It's not World War Three. It has to include Israel. And we're seeing it build up. And there's tit for tat, a little bit that precision strike, accidental missile break, children, escalation, escalation, escalation. But the big war, not Gaza. That's that's peanuts. It's the north. It's always the north. And in the north is Hezbollah, the great arm of Persia, the one of the heads of the Hydra. When they strike Syria, the people of the Antichrist, with a nuclear weapon, and Damascus is laid desolate, no one can go there. They even talk about how they have to, you know, no, no humans can go there, just some animals, and they gotta like, you know, there's other mentions, I can't remember if it's at the end of Ezekiel 38, 39, or if it's in Isaiah 17, somebody show me there. But you go look Isaiah 17 at the end of that, the rapture happens. There's a big harvest. But then they have to mark little spots, dead bodies and stuff with little blue flags. And there's radiation everywhere. So I don't believe there's a global nuclear war. I believe the nuclear war happens one more time on Damascus. And that's it. Then the, you know, skirmishes, rapture, craziness. Then you have... Uh, the ten kings rise up, try to reorganize the world after a, this massive rapture and nuclear war problem. Maybe aliens show up and the ten kings are alien kings. I don't know. I think this hap this it either happened. I I'm trying to calculate the plus one always. Like, could it push into next year that this? calculation happens and then it's like well wait a minute if Trump wins I don't think so I think everybody's gonna listen he dropped the mother of all bombs in the first like two months of his presidency last time and he showed them I'll use the big ones and everybody stopped fighting ISIS was done within two months of, of Trump being president I don't know if you remember that but if, if Trump comes in, he'll drop another Moab to in the middle of nowhere to show people, hey, America, will we're, we're going to fight now. We're not going to be the little babies and the, go to your mama's little children anymore. We're going to fight and we will drop the big bombs. And everybody stops. But you get Obama and you get Biden and you get Clinton and you get those kind of people in charge. Middle East, terrorist groups, somehow they get a bunch of money and they get to fight. They want destabilization of nations. That's what they want and they allow it. A Trump type person does not want destabilization of nations. He wants nation states to pay for themselves and fight for themselves. So let's not, not talking about Trump being the Antichrist. Because if he is the Antichrist, it's day one. 
And it doesn't make sense because there's no 10 kings. It doesn't make sense. It, the most, honestly, the, the way it mostly makes sense right now is for this fall for nuclear um, rapture, Ezekiel 38, 39, mass hysteria reorganized into 10 kings. And then the Antichrist rises up and makes peace. So that's it. That's where we are. So, in the meantime, until that day, if we're in Daniel 926B, what are we supposed to do? Who are who are the Christians? It doesn't really say exactly who we are there. Because remember the angel told Daniel this decree of the 70 weeks of the timing of Messiah being cut off and the timing of the wars all the way to the end and the timing of the Antichrist and the timing it's about your people and your city. It's about the Jews and Jerusalem. It's not talking to us about the church, but if you go read Isaiah 17, you can kind of see a little bit of a rapture there after the new bomb happens. There's a massive harvest. But all of those are hidden deep secrets in the Bible, first revealed to Paul and only revealed to us after Jesus died and resurrected and sent the Holy Spirit to reveal all things. You wouldn't be able to see. It was kept secret, not only from humans, but from the angels. The angels didn't know about the church. The, 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 it was all kept secret. It says that he kept it secret that way that if they would have known, hi, if they would have known, then they wouldn't have never crucified the Christ. Because that, what? That was the end game for the devil. But because they, they didn't know, they went along according to plan and the desolations are determined. So, if you want to know where the church is, you go to the letters of the church in Revelation 1, 2, 3, 4. Very end, those letters spell the history of the church. And we are at the very end of the Laodicean church. And if you include the church of Philadelphia, which or is America not Philadelphia? It's one of the original cities brotherly love there's a promise there that because you've kept my word which is I believe and the one who was sent it's windy here sorry it's windy today it feels really good though it's been so hot the wind is great I'm trying to go slow and methodical about this so that we know it's very clear. 3.10, Revelation 3.10. I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming upon the whole world. That little hour of trial, the hour, definitive article, one individual specific time, is the last week of Daniel's 70 weeks. Now we just looked at it. 69 weeks were done when Messiah was cut off and it paused. There's one week left. That's the seven year tribulation period. That's the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the time of when the Antichrist rises up, causes peace, then does a desolation in the temple and all this. Wrath of God, wrath of Satan. It's all coming. Reserved, reserved, reserved. Not for you and me. Nope. What does it say? Rev 310 on a windy day. I will keep you from the hour of trial. All the post trippers can just go flush themselves down the toilet with that one. Because God made a promise right there, Revelation 3.10. I'm going to keep you from this. And then John's caught up. And 
there's the 24 elders all up in heaven and they're all praising and having crowns and then the bema seat must have taken place and we take our crowns off and jesus is worthy and he opens the scrolls we are already up there so then it happens i think I, I'm a there's there's a gap between the rapture and the signing of that covenant, but as the days goes on, man, those that gap's going to be smaller and smaller, and so I think it's highly, highly probable, highly possible. Feast of Trumpets, 2024, is when the rapture takes place. Simultaneous to a nuclear bomb dropped on Damascus, written about in Isaiah 17. And doesn't it, it's not like weird prophecy now, it all makes sense. All of the chess pieces are in place. Turkey, I was thinking the other day, Turkey and Iran just 50 years ago. Okay, one generation ago, they were friends of Israel. They were friends of the West. Like big time friends. Economic, political, religiously. There was Christians there. There was no persecution. They were free people. It's only now in the past since the 70s probably since the whole six-day war kind of thing in Jerusalem in the 67 probably at that point all of the Islamic nations started to change their tune but you don't remember and all of these kids that are in like Harvard and UCLA Columbia and all these like evil universities now they're like doing these protests from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Or they go, they don't, they have no idea. Basic history. The brainwashing is so deep that chunks of basic history are completely erased. There is no Palestinian. The two-state solution was already created called Transjordan. I'm old enough to remember to see, whoa, history books with Transjordan in there where Israel and Jordan were given the land half and half. It was called, that, that was the two-state solution. Do you know who the Palestinians are of today in Gaza and the West Bank and all that? Those are Egyptian, Jordanian, Syrian, Saudi Arabian, Muslims that fought against Israel starting in 1948 and in 1967 that got displaced after Israel kicked their butt and they surrendered. Okay, they surrendered and Israel kicked their butt. There's all kinds of mir miracle, magical stories that happened during those wars. And they just surrendered and sat down. And then Israel gave them parts of the land to sit. Because they didn't, the people, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, they didn't want Turkey. They didn't want these people back. They didn't want to admit that they sent them for war. So they left them. That's who they are. They're abandoned people by other Islamic nations, not Israel. That's who they are. And guess what? Those people have now erased the history. And there's no Palestinian coins. There's no Palestinian history of governors and kings and culture and language they don't exist they're not real 
They are the abandoned people of the attempts of the Islamic nations to destroy Israel. Now, does that mean we don't have mercy? Go look at the numbers. The Gazans get delivered more food than any people, like number four or five, in the world. And they've grown in numbers ever since then. It's not, there's no genocide. These are just facts. Nevertheless, desolations are what? Determined. This is how it's supposed to be. And this problem that Israel has hindering the building of the temple, hindering the last seven weeks will be solved after the restrainer is pulled off and the Antichrist rises up and creates that covenant. Some people are trying to say it's a covenant with many. Yeah, but it's totally implied in the context from the angel Gabriel himself that it's about the city, your people in the city, Jerusalem. So it's implied, it's inferred, it's all in there, it's context. The angel's talking about the Jews in Jerusalem. Now, so this great war is coming, and it's between Israel and the surrounding Islamic nations. <clears throat> I don't think... I mean, you, you got the one guy who says uh, Russia, Ukraine, there's going to be a nuke bomb there, and then there's going to be nuke bombs in select cities in the United States. I mean, sure, that could happen after the rapture. But it won't happen while the church is here. And then you got... That's, you, you can have all kinds of crazy stuff all over the world. That's not what Daniel 9 is talking about. Because it's met, well, a little bit. Daniel 9, 26b, like we said. Until the end, wars will continue all the way. So yeah, sure, it's right there. But the definitive article war that happens right before the Antichrist rises up, then makes a peace deal, and builds the temple, and all the yada yada yada, right after the rapture takes place, coincided with a nuke bomb that I believe will happen on the Feast of Trumpets timeline for seven days of awe. Is it this year? It makes the most sense. Jesus has the ability to go plus one, and he'll. Reveal to us why and how if it happens Good long talk. I try to make it slow and easy and plain and it's good for me I have to do these things every day to myself Where are we? Who are we? What does the Bible say? If you make it easy plain and clear then you know all right, so until then it's Christmas every day. It's grace The door is open You can get to Jesus by asking and believing once the door is shut, once the rapture happens, that will not be anymore. You will not be getting a deposit of the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit, free grace gift in Jesus Christ after the door is shut and the rapture takes place. No, 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 no. You're going to have to follow Jesus and pay with your head getting cut off and not take the mark of the beast. Paul does not prepare us for that, the Christian church. Revelations does prepares those people for what's coming after the rapture. So you better count your lucky stars every day, is what you should do if you're a Christian. Be encouraged. You're the most blessed people of all time. Free gift, free grace. Everything's free, free, free for you if you believe. The economy is faith, asking, receiving. Thank you, Jesus. And then a res response of shedding the light, sharing the light everywhere of thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the voice of a Christian believer. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So what is it? It's August, like in the next two days. You basically could have two months left. I think it's highly possible. Let's enjoy it and shout even louder to finish strong. In Jesus' name, amen.